All right. I am very honored to welcome into this studio an expert herself, Linda, with her son-in-law, Jeff, who is the main owner of Beautifully Staged Homes. Linda, I waited for this moment for a while. I invited you as my first original guest when I first started this journey. And at that moment, you weren't ready, but I'm blessed that you are right now. So let's dive in. Let's share everything that you do with the world and all the glamour and all the beauty and all the talent that you pour into people's floors. <laughs> let's take it away, Linda, and share with our listeners what you do, who you are, and everything that you propose to our clients. Well, I'm Linda Leibel. And I'm with a beautiful staged home. I've owned it for about 18 years now. And uh, we help realtors like Olga make all of her listings look beautiful from top to bottom. We really establish the value so that buyers recognize it and they make an offer that they can't refuse. Amazing. So how does Jeff get into the picture and how did it all start? <laughs> Jeff? Uh a few years ago, just during COVID, everything kind of changed, and uh, Linda could use some help with the uh, staging business, so we started working together. I remember the very first client that I um, offered you guys, right? I think it was Joanne and Michael. Yes. And uh, she was going through a lot of health problems, and they wanted to sell their apartment. They needed to sell their apartment because he was retiring after working for gazillion years working for St. John's as a professor, and they just didn't know where to begin. So they called me first, and they invited me over to the evaluation of the apartment. I walked through, and I knew right away that it needed to be really decluttered. I called you, Linda, and I said, Linda, I need your help. And you right away told me, hey, old guy, have Jeff that join me right now, and he will be able to help your clients come in and organize and really bring boxes, and help them get through the process nice and seamlessly. Mm -hmm. And I remember that was the first time when I met you, Jeff. Yes. And I was very, very impressed because I go through, like, a tornado from the very beginning, right when I first walk in, where the books are everywhere and stuff everywhere. And there's so much, so much people accumulate over the years. And they just sometimes get to the point where I see they get so overwhelmed that they get first excited when they accumulate all these wonderful belongings, and then they get to the point where they just can't handle it anymore mentally and emotionally. It bothers them, and you could feel it. Mm -hmm. And then when we come in and we give them the guidance of what to do next, it becomes more like it becomes more like an emotional disconnect for them, where they have to understand that it's not about them anymore. The space has to be presented to the marketplace in a way that there is nothing emotional that's surrounding them or the buyer that's coming in that they're feeling. Our job is to make it so presentable that people walking in and they see the space at its best potential and value. And so that's what you did, Jeff. Right, right. But let's talk a little bit about what exactly you do because I know that you guys compliment each other and you guys an amazing team just for the record i'm going to bring it up to the world <laughs> that you guys mother-in-law and son-in-law team i mean this is so unique i have never met son-in-law and mother-in-law get along so well and you guys just amazing i think it all goes back to the fact that you guys get along as humans first and when you get along as humans then everything else just nice and easy True. Well, he just, I think he forgets sometimes that I'm his mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes he thinks he's the boss, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I think it's because we just really get along and we think our wavelength is together. On the same sequence. Yeah, definitely. That's very important. So, Jeff, what is your attributes? What do you bring to Linda's uh, business? What was really the main journey that you started and what is your duties on day-to-day -day operations? Um, so what I do is the day, is, is exactly that, is the operations. So I run the operations. Um, 
Linda obviously does all the design, all the colors, all the purchasing of the furniture, all of the, you know, putting it together. The matching. Yeah, making sure, basically, is when I go to the warehouse, I have wonderful things to pick from. Amazing. So, so she can, prepares it for you. Yes, exactly. And so what do you we, do? We, uh, we put it together in the house. We bring it to the house. So essentially the whole the process goes like this. You're going to recommend a client needs staging in, in a home. And uh, what we'll do, as you know, is we'll show up. We'll take our videos, our pictures, our measurements. And then we're going to make a recommendation on what they need to do to this house to be able to present its house in the best way possible. So what that may entail, and we're going to go back. So what that entails is usually... Um, staging the main living areas, the master bedroom, and any other unusual rooms throughout the uh, throughout the house. So as we take these videos, pictures, and floor plans, we come back. We come back to the office and we discuss it as a team on what we're going to do, and then we execute it. You know. Well, you know, I will go a step back. We're sure. going to begin with paint jobs. Sure. Because I just. It's like walking into a kitchen. I personally can never cook if the kitchen is messy. All my counters have to be open and room for me to really breathe and move around and do what I need to do, right? I just need my space to be clear and easy for me to do what I need to do. Right. So the same applies with homes. When I walk into people's homes, I know that sometimes it's painful for them to hear, but I really push very hard for them to Put a fresh coat of paint because when you guys come in and you really bring your beautiful furniture, I just can't imagine bringing all this beautiful furniture when the walls are not freshly painted and it just doesn't look right. So as much as it could sound painful, I really make people do the job. And it's not like I'm just putting it on them and just running away. I am there physically involved with them. I recommend painters I come in day in day out to preview what's being done I'm like a project manager right not only that I will recommend them to do the staging but I will also oversee what kind of paint we're going to pick what kind of lighting that the apartment or the house generates so really all interconnected so I don't want people to think like oh all she does is just staging no there is a lot of secret sauces behind the scenes and so unless we will have the privilege of having the pre-listing consultation with complementary staging consultation, then only then we figure out what needs to be done, right? Right, correct. And especially to those homes that are not successfully sold. There's a lot of homes on the market, especially nowadays, that is not selling. Right. For whatever the reasons are, the rates are high, the broker is wrong, didn't take the right pictures, didn't do the right job. But I feel like it's the component of all inclusive combination. And that's where we come in. And that's when we appoint clients to work with professionals that we have in our Rolodex and, and direct them to professionals that could handle it for them. But let's talk about the paint jobs and how important it is. Why do you think it's important to paint? In general, well, obviously you want to start with a fresh canvas, right? You don't want to you don't want to have remnants of the previous owners around. You want people to be able to envision themselves being there, neutral. Yeah, and also, well, to be able to envision themselves there, where in where when you're walking into the place, often we've seen this so many times where the owners have a, a sense of style of their own, right? Not good, not bad, but it's theirs. We want to be able to make the house appeal to everyone, right? So the most people possible. So that's why when we're recommending paint, usually we're in neutrals. We want to have, uh, you know, be able to have a neutral color to be able to show off the house the best way possible. Well, um, we did something recently, um, a home out east, where the person had a neutral color on the walls mostly, but they had accent walls with a deep coral color. Mm. Not good. It actually, warm colors advance and make the room seem shorter, smaller. So I always bring samples with me, and I chose the right color, and they painted. 
and and it was just those accent walls and it was just made the whole it freshened up the room and made it look bigger bigger right so it doesn't have to be a terrible chore it can be a wonderful thing that gets your home sold if you look at it in the right way do you guys have painters on your Yes, we do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, we do. So if anybody is using you, you guys can also handle that for them? Yep. Yes. Excellent, excellent. So from your experience, why do you guys believe and feel that staging is important? Well, nowadays when people look online, they first look at the photos and they say to themselves, do I like this? Oh, yes, I, I, I like this. <clears throat> then they'll look at the price and then they say, is it worth it? So I think every single time someone looks online, they have to see something that they like if they're going to show up at the open house or right. call for an appointment. So I think what we do is make sure that all of the pictures online are marketable pictures. And so it's showing the value and it prompts people to make an appointment or come to the open house. You know, I'm glad you brought up the pictures. Uh, as you know, I just recently got a client, which we will work together on. She was listed on the market before with, a, with another broker. And she couldn't sell. For six months, she was on the market and she couldn't sell. And then when we were recommended and invited to preview her space, I knew right away why she couldn't sell. I just like put it out there. And I know that it's not something that she was open to hearing, but I would give her the truth. Right? This is one thing about me. Like, you either love it or you hate it, but I will tell you the truth. And speaking of paint jobs and speaking of pictures, um, I looked up the pictures that she had with the previous broker. And to be honest with you, it was such a disservice to the client. She wasted six months of her time. She spent money paying for the maintenance. And I would rather you take the six months multiplied by maintenance and invest into a professional photography. And not only they didn't have a paint job, not only that they didn't stage the apartment, not only that it was not pleasantly presented to the marketplace, the pictures were absolutely terrible. Right. And when clients call me, the first thing I do, I Google their address and I look at pictures. And this is bingo right there, the first shot when they are on the call with me. Well, do you know why I couldn't sell? Well, I'm not telling you why you couldn't sell until you hire me. Right. <laughs> okay. But I already know up front what we need to do going forward. Where do I begin? So in a way, I hate to say this, but in a way, I kind of like feel if my competition does not want to do the right thing, then I pray for them to not sell. So this way we could step in and show them what we made of. Right. And Douglas Selman would never allow us advertise anything that's not professionally presented and done. As a matter of fact, we do have every single listing. It's irrelevant whether it's $100,000 co-op or $25 billion property. We present everything with professional photos. So the buyers could have the privilege of what you just said, understanding the concept and the value of appreciation for the space. Mm -hmm. And I think what people do professional photos, okay, it not only shows you the freshness of the space, the potential of the space with staging because you direct the buyers, right? This is where the dining room, <clears throat> this is where the kitchen, this is where the bedroom is. So we're giving them visual direction of what goes where, but we also give them an opportunity to see, wow, what is the potential that I could do? Is my king size bed going to fit here? Because they, I see, have a king size bed. We also bring floor plans, which is carefully measured each room, so that gives them the space measurements where buyers could see, wow, my bedroom is that much of a size, and now we're looking at this staged home that has this kind of furniture. Will my furniture fit in there? So right. we're giving them a shortcut, right? It's a mm -hmm. shortcut for visual to make sure that they could move themselves in. And what do you think happens when they show up at the open house? It's a lot of activity. Right. It's a lot of activity mm -hmm. because now not only we have one, two, or three buyers, now we have multiple buyers showing up. Right. And multiple buyers means multiple the offers. price goes up. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Yes, this is definitely indeed. 
And Linda, you touched upon something very important. Um, not only making sure that the property is well presented on the inside, how impactful it is for someone that will work on their house internally and make their home look presentable from the inside. And now the sign goes up and buyer drives by. And what is the first thing they look at? The outside. The outside. So the curb appeal is It's very, very, very important. important. Right. So, Jeff, what do you have to say about curb appeal? For curb appeal, first of all, you need to get your landscaper in. Number one thing, because... I think about it this way. So you have eight seconds to get somebody to come to make a decision to drive to that house and look at it. So you've got, what is that, about 12 photos. So the first one you need is you got to see the front of the house. Then you're going to look through the interior. You're going to look through the back of the house. And you have eight seconds they're making their decision. Wow. So, so when you get the person or the potential buyer to show up, A, it needs to look nice. It needs to look like those photos look. So it keep keep your property maintained. Two, when you're showing staged photos, have the property staged. So when they walk in there, they're going to go, wow. They walk through that front door. The first thing they see is the same picture that they saw online. So you're not deceiving them. You're, they're, they're getting a great feeling now. This is what I saw. This is what I liked because that's why they showed up. And now they're going through the home. So now it's, you know, now it's on to your team. Now you've got uh, time to explain to them why this house is great and is going to work for them. They're not, you're not getting no, you're getting yes, and you're yes. getting opportunity. So. Absolutely. Well, from your practice, Linda, I know that we deal with many different types of clients and um, my really, I shouldn't say favorite, but it, it's something that I really, really enjoy working with. Those families that lose their loved ones, they go through like really big emotional roller coaster ride. They have to now make a decision what they're going to do, where they're going to start, where they're going to keep the property. Is there multiple uh, people that really inherited the property where it's multiple siblings and family members that they have to really divide all of this? But I think that my really favorite part is that where we have clients that when they lose their loved ones they come to us and we help them navigate through this process what does it mean to you when you as a stager get to be called on such projects what does it mean to you where do you guys begin how do you guide those clients oh boy well it's very uh sometimes it's very you have to really put on your your psychologist hat um, and really understand where they're coming from. A lot of times, you know, it could be their home that they grew up in. Yes. And you're you're telling them, this is the room. Oh, this is the room that you slept in as a, as a kid, and and how you're going to change it. And sometimes I've been with, you know, sellers that start crying in front of me wow. when they have to give up a home that even though they're not living there anymore, when the parents die. And so it's very gratifying once it's staged and done and it sells for over list. They're just, these people are so happy. But it started with some crying in a bedroom. Wow. Speaking of kids' bedrooms, you mentioned before, what would be a piece of advice if someone has five billion toys in the room and then now you have to start showing it? Not only it's hard for clients where they have to put kids to sleep and they have to continue to show their homes. They're still living in those homes, right? What's your best piece of advice for those that are really loving toys and they want to continue to live with them until they move? Yeah. What's your best piece of advice as a professional? Well, one thing I always tell clients is that kids only play with selective toys. And actually, the parents do know that they have like maybe 10 favorites. So pack up the ones that they're not using and that will definitely keep the clutter down in a in a kid's bedroom and and then put it in a box label it surprise mm. and then once you move and when they open it it's like christmas or hanukkah all over again it's like oh my god <laughs> the kids love it because they haven't seen these toys in a few months so you get to i i always tell people you're moving anyway pack, pack up. And 
that allows people to see the space instead of all the clutter and the toys and the, the, the uh, you want to sell the space, not the stuff. Excellent, excellent. What's your one piece of advice to those that are moved already and they have vacant home and they didn't sell it because they didn't want to be inconvenienced during their move, but now they moved out and the home is vacant? What's your best piece of advice to those that thought that they would rather sell it after they moved, they wanted to paint, and now no furniture? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's... Um, Why do you think people shouldn't be keeping vacant be homes for showings? Because, well, number one, if it's an older home, mm -hmm. you see every speck of dirt, every crack, everything that's wrong with the house mm. is front and center. Mm. It's even hollow sounding without rugs and furniture in there. It sounds echoey. Right. It's not appealing. It has no soul. So when you, when you, even if you just bring in minimal amounts of furni furniture, mostly like just lay like the first floor, um, you put down rugs and then you bring in lamps and you bring in furniture and all of a sudden the, it's, it doesn't feels sound homey. hollow. It feels homey. And it usually, it's like 90% of uh, homes that are staged sell faster and for more money. Wow. 90%. Wow. From, yes. This is from the National Association of Realtors. Realtors. So you run your statistics well. Yep, yep. Well, Jeff, what would be your take on the actual process itself? What, the timeline-wise, what does it take you? Is it based on square footage? Is it because is it based on if it's co-op, condo, or residential home? I know that this is your uh, sure. elite area. Yeah. So the, the the whole process can be done in three weeks. So that's the process from us meeting you to walking out with a staged home. So essentially, what happens is is again we're going to meet with you. We're going to come to the property. We're going to either, depending whether the home's occupied or, or whether it's vacant, um, goes in two different directions, and uh, um, make a proposal on how you should stage your home. At that point, it's about a week. You know, once we, once we go through this initial cons consultation, there's usually something the owner needs to do, like paint. They have to declutter, which usually means about half the stuff has to go away. Um, they have to, uh, you know, get the yard done, something of the sort. But it's usually something pretty simple that can be done. And like I said, they can usually get that done within a week or two. And then at that point, we put you on the schedule a few days later, um, and we're going to come out. And what your day will look like in that case is uh, essentially we show up with our trucks at about, uh, about noon, and we're going to be there for the rest of the day, whether it's a small house, big house, or whatnot. It basically takes the rest of the day, and we'll have your, your home staged. It really depends on how big of a crew we're going to need in terms of your square footage, how many rooms are done, et cetera, et cetera. What if it's, let's say, a home that has 10 bedrooms? You're obviously not staging all 10 bedrooms. That is correct. When we do our consultation and we walk through, we've done, you know, a lot of people, they sell one house, two houses in their lifetime, right? Right. I think we did 150 last year. Wow. So we we kind of have an eye for it. It's sort mm -hmm. of uh, something simple is if it's a, you know, we always stage the master bedroom because those are the people buying the house. Right. Um, but when the other bedrooms are large, you really don't need to stage them. It's the tricky rooms you have to stage because right. those are what people have what to be tricky? able to see. Small? Small. Small, odd shape. Odd shape. Uh, capes a lot of times when wow. they're not raised or or they're short or unusual because how do you know what to use that space for? Correct. Like what can you use that space for? And that's, right. you know. Remember that house with the uh, garage was pushed in? Yes. And <laughs> this was not selling the way it was. I, I don't, can't even explain what the, what the contractor did, but they pushed in and used up almost like one quarter or more of the room, of the right. bedroom, that was a normal size bedroom. And so what we recommended was to put um, sliding doors to make it storage. Mm. And that, that solved the problem. Otherwise, it was just this big, it was like an extra roof. It was wow. just really weird. So our recommendation saved Worked. the day and it sold. 
So we made it look normal, even though it was far from normal when we yeah. saw it. So you guys come across a lot of different designs and ideas, just like we do. Right. Um, but you guys cover what types of properties? Let's let's give our uh, audience an understanding. What do you guys cover? What types of homes? So you cover co-ops? Yes. Where you're required to do what? <laughs> Insurance, Insurance. Work with the management agency. We take all of that off your plate. Right. So, so we can work in the co-ops. We work with condos, uh, condos. condos single owner properties, um, gated communities, um, basically anything residential. We really don't large, we don't, really, large homes, small homes. Yeah, everything. So in between. you cover luxury as well. We mm -hmm. absolutely do. Excellent. Yeah, Jeff. Right. Mm -hmm. When it comes to co-ops, let's let's dive in a little bit more into sure. co-op world. Especially right now, we're dealing with a lot of North Shore Tower business. Right. Um, that's going to be our multiple projects already in North Shore Towers that yes. we've done. I know it's not your favorite because it's so much political hoops you have to jump through. Right. Um, get approval from the building and, you know, you can't just come in and do whatever like you do in a private home. So let's touch upon giving our clients and potential clients information on how do you cover all of that with management company. From the beginning to the end. Well, essentially, you have to make arrangements for, we're moving. So it's like moving into a building like everyone else moves into a building. Anybody in New York City certainly is aware of this. But you have to make arrangements with the management company to be able to get into their building. They're going to, each management company has their own set of regulations, rules, um, and details that you have to follow. So some of them you can't move in on Mondays. Some of them you can only move in from 8 until 3. Some of them have areas you're not allowed to go to. Um, so you have to find out all this information. You have to act accordingly and, uh, and essentially move in. And that's what we're doing. So we, we've done this a lot. So we, we kind of know how to work with the management companies, what they need, notices they need, insurances they require and all of the rest of it. So that's something you just put on us and we take care of it. So your contracts include the moving in, the moving out, the staging, the, the life load of unloading and reloading everything back to take it back, the furniture, right? right? right. So they're renting the furniture, they're rent renting the labor during putting it out and destaging it. So right. the process is pretty... The process is, is actually quite complex, but that's right. for complex for us, not for you. Right. For you, you say show up on Friday at <laughs> Right. You know, sign the contract. Sign the contract. Sign the contract. Sign the and contract, we'll take it from here. We'll, we'll, we'll see at two, you know, yeah. and we're like, okay, let's see, make that work. And that's basically it. But the actual nuts and bolts of it is, is quite comprehensive. Um, just as simple, like, I don't know, your, your viewers here, how long does it take you to buy a couch for your living room? You know, we do like probably, you know, a few hundred living rooms every year. Wow. So wow. we have to put that together. Wow. So so speaking of living rooms and people that do love buying your furniture, because we did come across that situation um, recently, right? When, sure. when When a buyer walked in and she really liked uh, everything that the property had to offer, including all the furniture, I, as I have to honestly tell you. How many times have we had a situation where buyer walked in? I, I, I had a case this week when buyer walked in, they love the house, we're doing home inspection, and all they care about is owner's furniture. And all I keep telling them, disconnect yourself from furniture. You are buying a house. Right. So how many times have we had a situation where they would call us and say, well, I love this house. And I want it to be left completely furnished. Now, the furniture doesn't belong to the owner. The furniture belongs to the staging company. So what do we do from there? Uh, quite often, we give them a price. <laughs> <laughs> so have you ever sold your furniture with? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, often. Mm -hmm. Often. Yes. Yeah. So, But many times, they think, oh, my goodness, it's been used, it's been used, it's been used. Right. So they... They, they expect a lower price. Right. And many times we're putting brand new furniture oh, wow. into right. the house. 
And so I can't sell it at a loss. I can't, I'm, I'm in business to make money, not Correct. to lose money. Absolutely. So we give them the price if they're fine with the price. And many times they are. And then it, then it's a done deal. Right. Yeah. A lot of the people who, who want to buy our furniture, they see the value in it in terms of they have furniture that fits the home already. They don't have to go out and purchase it. They have to purchase it, but they don't have to find it. They don't have, they to, don't look have for, to look for the perfect match for that space. They already found it. It's already there. Maybe so, we should. Maybe we should think about the future business, Jeff. Yeah, Alinda. there you go. Yeah, you know, warehouses and buying closeouts. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you never know. Listen, my brain is a scary place. Don't give it ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me the money, I'll, well, there you <laughs> I'll go. start moving around. <laughs> but yeah, we we don't. But to be honest, we prefer not to sell our furniture. Because it is nice and we like it. Yeah. And we did put a lot of effort into finding it acquiring and buying it, it and acquiring it and right. building it. Um, and so. many of the pieces fit perfectly, perfectly in many different situations. Yes. We're not buying things that are ultra contemporary or ultra traditional. So we kind of fit a middle ground so that people who are a little bit older will like it. And people who are a little bit younger will like it. And we always use, um, most of the time anyway, um, abstract, more contemporary artwork so that it kind of bridges the gap and makes right. it seem a little bit more updated. So we could be an older house, right. but a, a much more updated look. Well, the best part is that we have done a lot of projects together and so I think during this recording, we could include some of the pictures and videos that we have done together. So I sure. want people to get the understanding when you're describing your furniture. I want people to have the visual of understanding what kind of furniture it is. Sure. But the last one we did, uh, not the last one, the one before that, the owner actually did not want to take furniture. Do you remember that one? <laughs> the table and chairs in oh, the kitchen. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was brand new because she just bought it for her mom. Right. Yes. And that's ours now. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So we are up for donations sometimes yeah. <laughs> because rather than my clients pay money for life load to get it sure. out and pay for it, I always tell my clients, you know what? Let's ask Jeff and Linda if they would like to take it and then use it in an ongoing basis for other new clients. So right. I think to me this is a blessing because I always like to find creative ways of giving back, mm -hmm. right? right? And to me this is like for a client, okay, let's look at the bright side. You don't have to pay the life load to get rid of it and pay <clears throat> the building and the movers and right. people to like come in and be inconvenienced and pay for it out of pocket. But if it's a newer piece of furniture that someone can use it, if someone, let's say, is moving or someone passed away and they don't want it anymore, then you guys will gladly take it and you could use it and reuse it for other projects, which is great. Right. Well, in that particular um, listing that you're talking about, you had your team come in there and take the stuff that we definitely were not going to be using, that we could, we could not take it. So that yes. was really good that you guys got all of that stuff out of there so that we could bring in our dining room set and our beds so it made the home look so much more updated. Well, Linda, I have to honestly tell you, like, I don't know, it's maybe because instant gratification for me personally, right? Because real estate, I just want to put it on record. Real estate, the process of selling real estate, it's time consuming. Right. And it's not going to happen overnight. This is not a stock. You mm -hmm. don't just go out there and just put it on market and sell it overnight. Even cash transactions, even transactions that are done relatively quickly, it usually takes at least two to three weeks for running the title search and all that. So can you only imagine a, a person that likes a very high pace to be so patient when it comes <laughs> to transactions? Yeah. So I do find my other ways and avenues. How do I create that instant gratification? And so for me personally, it's the cleaning, it's the organizing, it's doing things for my clients, right? And so when you guys destaging it, I usually like to take my time and like run into the space and like seeing like, oh my gosh, you know, I bought these curtains, I'm gonna take them down, so I'm gonna use it for my other projects. But for you guys, like you take your stuff, you put it in the load with your truck and the guys are coming in and it's very high paced of movement. 
But then we also put aside, okay, this goes into donations. This goes, now we don't need it anymore, right? This goes into like maybe giving it to the neighbor. Maybe we could have somebody who works with us. We're going to offer it to them. Hey, do you want it? We don't want to waste it. Let's just give it and reuse it. And I think this is what I find the joy of what I do. If people would ask me like, what do you like the most about doing your daily operations? That's one of the things that I pretty much like. Creating, mm-hmm. acquiring, giving, sharing, donating. It's like that high pace of movement for me personally. Right. So, uh, Linda and Jeff, what would be one piece of advice that you would give to someone that is getting ready to put their home on the market? Call Sh- Olga. <laughs> 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 and then Olga calls us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, that, thank you. I appreciate yes. that. What would your... Well, I would start with organizing your house first because we all accumulate too much stuff in our lifetimes. And and if you've lived in the home for, like, what, 20, 25 years especially, you've accumulated a lot of stuff that you don't even look at anymore. So packing away, giving, giving things away, uh, doing that kind of thing first will make your job so much easier when Olga comes in and we come in. You've already, uh, yeah, you've already uh, eliminated a lot of clutter and a lot of excess things that you're not using anymore. And, and then, then I would uh, have us come in for a consultation after you've met with Olga and we would tell you the finer things to do. Mm. Some, like, you know, f- furniture rearranging. Or I don't think that particular dining room set is going to work f- for the today's buyer. They're very hypocritical, hypercritical, not hypocritical, not sure. hypocritical. <laughs> um, and we would make recommendations on some changes that you could make, all for letting people know the value of your home. You value your home, but you have to put it front and center. So that's where, where we come in to help you to get to that point so it's a much easier process. And then, you know, Olga works her magic with the with the marketing, and then you get your home sold. But those are the first couple of things that I think that we would recommend people do, even before you're even on the market. Excellent. So in other words, prep first. What we do is we stage vacant homes. We stage homes that have, let's say, someone who recently passed and or they have to rearrange. So we begin with paint jobs and all of that. Then we have children, right, where we have to rearrange their rooms and make sure that we declutter their spaces. What do you suggest to those that have, let's say, partially moved in between two homes? Because we have... Sure. One in uh, Roslyn Harbor that we just did. So what do you do with those that have partially their own stuff and then it's somewhat already empty, so now we have to complement and bring in more. So how do you how do you call this type of homes? We call it mixed media. Mixed media. Mixed media. Um so for example, the Roslyn Harbor job, mm-hmm. they had um a couple of sofas in the living room. And children's Children's and they had too. children's rooms, and they had um, uh, a lot of nice china in their in their uh, kitchen, and glass cabinets, which was wonderful. We we used all of their china for those for the for the glass cabinets, which we usually have to buy and bring over and do. So that was a nice thing, um, and so we use our furniture to. To put um, to to um, for the missing pieces, anything, mm. uh, any room that's missing any pieces, we bring we bring it in to make it whole, and so we just use what you have and we amplify it and we bring in pieces that are missing. So that's usually what we do with the, the mixed media. So it's some of our stuff, some of their stuff. What do you guys do with builders? When we, let's say I have a client right now that's building six units condos, what do you guys usually do with this type of um, clients? With one of those, we we will usually stay, it depends on, you know, the setup and whatnot, 
But what what does work is so developers. Um, I'm yeah, referring to developers. Yeah, developers. So if you're talking about a, a situation of apartments, you know, obviously we want to stage one of the apartments. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll you will stage only one. We can stage more, but what we've found often is that uh, you're staging the one, it'll sell, and then we stage the next one. Mm. We then move we it. Stage the next one, and then we just move move things around. You know, add, subtract, or whatnot. Um, We've done other other areas uh, where you'd have building complexes where we've done one house and then we do the next house and then we mm. do the next house, the same sort of scenario. So they always have a show home, for, essentially, um, and that's what we that's what we do with the builders. The builders they're they're different they, in terms of when you're doing a uh, with a consumer, you're you're dealing with they have to uh, detach from the property. You're, mm-hmm. you're dealing with that, so they have to detach, and then they have to declutter, and then we can come in and design right. um, and get that done. Where the builder, they already know staging gets the most money and moves it the fastest, and that's what they're interested in. They want this, you know, they need to move this property to free up their capital. Excellent. So, so that's what we're. So you know, you're bringing ideas. We we come in. We're going to stage their home. Uh, or their home, their prop. It's actually not their home. It's their property. Let's right. call it what it is. We're going to come in, and they really do understand. They're getting their most money, and they're moving it the fastest. Uh, that frees up their capital. So they're really quite easy to, in general, deal with. So they're good clients. They're great clients in terms of they let us do our job. They let us be professional, and they and know that business. we're coming in. It's repeat yeah, they, business. They don't. They don't really come in to watch every move that we make. Sometimes sellers are like that, you know, the homeowners. Right. Right, right, <laughs> they right. want to see what you're doing. Right, right, right. They get <laughs> yeah. excited. Like, but the, but, the, they get excited. but yeah. the builders are usually, okay, Linda, here's the key, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do that's, your thing. That's awesome. Now, you mentioned recently you had a client to be, who we know mutually who it is. We're not going to mention names. Uh, but the client wants to completely renovate their own home. And they need to move out mm-hmm. because they would like to completely gut renovate or remodel their home. So you do have clients that reach out to you for temporary rental of the furniture mm-hmm. just in that transitional period. Mm-hmm. Let's touch on that. Yeah. Well, in that case, we can rent furniture to uh, the client. Mm-hmm. Um, the only th- we can do soup to nuts make it seem like they're they're living there absolutely okay the only thing that we we don't do is we don't provide mattresses and box springs Mm. we can bring in the bedding and you know lamps area rugs everything that we have but because we we have two warehouses for our furniture and accessories but box springs and mattresses take up so much space so when we do a bedroom it's bare bones we we do the frame and we raise up the frame, and we do some batting, and we put the quilt on and everything. It makes it look like so it's a fake. Ra- it's fake. It's so fake. just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> don't jump on the bed. Don't jump, jump on, on the, the bed. <laughs> <beds. laughs> yes. Yeah, They're not meant the for <laughs> right. no. sleeping. No. Yeah. So the client would have to bring their own mattress and box spring, but we can bring everything else. The headboard, you name it, nightstands, everything. And then... If you want us to do window treatments, it's a it's an extra charge. But um, if you most of the time when they want to rent, they um, they already have they'll bring their own dishes and things like that. But money talks. If they want me to bring bring in that stuff, tea kettle, right, uh, coffee machine, we'll do it. But uh, that's always in in a discussion. But the sofa. Everything, all of that, it's just like staging. We can do the uh, that for, you know, three months, four months, whatever time frame that they need. So what's your highest contracts usually? The highest? Um, the timeline. Oh, the timeline. Oh, longest. Oh. The longest. Oh, longest. longest. Right. S- um, six months, six usually. Months. Yeah. But usually it gets done quickly. We find when you stage a home, we, we draft our contracts usually under three months. Mm. And that's so standard usually contracts in three months. Three yeah. months, yep. And that's plenty of time to close the deal. It seems that seems to be about the right amount of time. Over winter, it sometimes takes a little bit longer. Summers is shorter. And uh, but that's in general, we don't have a lot of uh, uh, issues with that. It seems to be the right number. 
We've had um, a few this year that were very, very pricey homes, mm. like $4 million and up. and up. They took a little bit longer. And we usually do a six-month contract with them because it takes a little bit longer to sell a more expensive home. And and then if it doesn't sell in that, we go out through a month, a month to month. Months then to we'll months go agreements. month to month. Right. Mm -hmm. Months to months agreements. Well, interesting. So let's cover the importance of repairs. Repairs are crucially important, in my opinion, especially when you have something that's leaking, especially you have something that's visibly unpleasant to potential buyers. The doors are not locking. Uh, you know, the the stove is not turning on. The refrigerator is not pleasantly showcased. Uh, the tables are not, you know, properly looking. And the chairs are broken. And do you know how many times we walk into people's homes and they tell me, I want to sell my house as it is. I don't care what would it take. Figure it out. All I want is my money. And I want to sell it just the way it is. Right. Um, I'm sure you run into that a lot. And I know you can't say it, but the the reality is when they say just sell it as is and don't do anything, mm -hmm. they're going to get a lot less money for the house than they want. That's just a fact. All those things that you were mentioning, like the doors don't close, the doors don't lock, there's leaks, the there's discoloration, et cetera. Those are turnoffs. Those are are great big turnoffs on your house that people are coming in to look and they're going, well, if I see this, what else is the matter? So it's so important to take care of those those things. Make sure that uh, uh, it's details. You have to look at the details. Right. Well, I always tell my clients, $50 gallon of paint in the gallon. It's only $50 that's going to cost to you. To the buyers, visually, their mind thinks oh my God, it will probably cost $10,000 to paint this home or to repair additional. Plumbers, electricians, uh, I mean, you name it, painters, right? All of this could be done very easily. Right. Yes, it's inconvenience to the sellers, but in my opinion, to repair everything that's visually absolutely necessary, like, okay, if you have, let's say, an old water heater, and it's not something you want to replace because it still have a few more years expectancy on it. We're not going to hold you accountable for and say, look, you need to get this completely replaced. But if it's something that's visually affecting your ability to present it to the marketplace, what would be your take, Linda? Well, I find that buyers multiply the actual cost of a repair or, or a paint job something that can be easily fixed, um, they just multiply. You know, they think it's, like you said, $10,000 to paint the house when you could spend $50 on a, a can of paint. Um, so I always advise them to definitely fix things that need to be fixed, repair things that need to be repaired. Uh, take a look at, it, you know, it's, it's also good sometimes to have a pre-inspection so mm. that the inspector can tell you what is wrong? Like I wouldn't notice if it if it if there's a, if there's a faulty electrical, I might not notice that, but a but inspector an inspector will. would. And you don't want any quagmires. You don't want anything to go wrong when you've got a buyer on the hook that wants to buy your house, and then all of a sudden the, the inspector goes, well, you know this this problem, that problem, this and that, and then all of a sudden you're back to square one again. So you want to do things right the first time so that you don't have to prolong the, the time that you're on market. Well, you know that uh, one of my previous guests was featured on Newsday. Yes. And I have, <laughs> I have the actual Newsday with me where he was featured on the front cover, right? So he was featured on the front cover because he does an amazing job for our clients. And going back to the pre-inspection idea, right? I'm glad you brought it up because that pre-inspection idea is an amazing idea because you could now know up front before the buyer comes in through your door what kind of repairs must be done. 
This could be something that cosmetics repairs, that visually exposed to anyone's eyes. It could be something that silent repairs that we're not aware of. Like I recently had an inspection with uh, my home inspector, and he actually discovered a couple of things in the boiler room that needed to be done. And the seller didn't know about it. He was locked behind the boiler room. The door was completely locked with, you know, a closet and didn't even bother to go in. Who goes in every day into their boiler room? Nobody. No one runs into the boiler room every single day. But finding out those um, very important repairs to be done, it eliminates a lot of headache when we find a buyer. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's so hard right now getting the buyers, right? The interest rates are up, so you, right. we have to remove every obstacle we can. Because Absolutely. there's enough that we don't know about. Right. So when we see these these simple things that can be done, they have to be done. Like the, the sellers, I can't emphasize enough, they need to do this work. Because these tiny li little obstacles can just throw a wrench into, you know, it's so hard selling right now. And quite honestly, other houses are doing it. They're fixing it up. They're taking care of the property. They're making it look good. That's so their competition, you bet their you. competition is handling it right. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's earlier in the earlier in our conversation, you had mentioned that things have slowed down on the real estate market. Well, for us, it's actually sped up. Wow. So everybody's trying to do, a, you know, put their best foot forward. Absolutely. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every professional. That's what I'm seeing. Everybody is stepping up and everybody is doing the best they possibly can because they understand. Here is the most important thing. Let's let's really talk about this on record. The minute the rates come down, mm -hmm. we know what's going to happen with the market. Mm -hmm. Every single seller that was mindful about doing the right thing, not only for their family, for themselves, for their home, these sellers could right away put their homes on the market even now, we still have buyers that are already willing and able to buy. Enormous right. amount of opportunities out there. Enormous amount of buyers that are still looking for good homes. And because the inventory is so limited, we are facing a lot of shortage, right? right. So if you, are, if you have a home that needs to go on the market, you better make sure that it's presented the proper way so this way your competition, while they're getting ready, uh, does not take your buyer away. Right. Because buyers are looking, and I have to honestly tell you, buyers know more than we do. <laughs> because while we working on other projects and other clients and getting things ready, buyers are sitting on their accounts and constantly getting notified within seconds right. on everything that goes new on the market. Right. My buyers know everything that's happening on the marketplace and they're sitting on the sidelines because they're looking for what they want. They're Correct. For they know better good. what, what they, they, want what they want than anyone else. And, yeah, right. Correct. And they're waiting. Absolutely. But they're there. Yeah, so you don't want to uh, have these other homes that are more prepared and fixed properly. You don't want them to, uh, you know, you don't want to be up against them. You want to do, you want to beat them. So fix and repair. Absolutely. Well, speaking of an emotional, psychological, and mental, right? What do they say? Uh, people um, people buy with emotions and then justify with logic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so our job is to make sure that people get emotionally excited over what they see. Mm -hmm. And once they understand the emotional excitement, I have a case right now where they were in the budget of, let's say, X amount of money. And they looked at homes that were in a much higher price point, and they went up. They went up actually significantly. They went up almost $400,000 from what they originally told me that they were on the market for and pre-approved for. Right. Because the minute they found something that is step up way above from what they were expecting to pay, the whole family now got together and said, oh, you love that homes? We all going to chip in and we're going to help you financially. So let us help you get this home. Right. But this was this was the experience that the emotions got extremely kicked in. Right. And now everything that we talked about a while ago, what's your budget, what's your price point, what are you looking to spend? All of this goes where? Down the train. Right. <laughs> okay. 
It doesn't matter anymore. They'll find the money. They'll find the right. money because now they found something that they truly emotionally and psychologically got excited about and right. they see the future. So a lot of times people would invest into a short term, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll buy something right now for the next seven years. Mm -hmm. I'll buy something for the next 10 years. The kids will go off to college. But the kids will go off to school. You know, kids will get married. They'll move out. So it's a cycle, right? It's a cycle. And then once people become empty nesters, right, the whole dynamic of their goals and vision changes because it's just the husband and wife or one of them, God forbid, passed away, and it's not only one person stayed in the house. So everything constantly changes. Right. And uh, one of the things that uh, you were talking about, emotional responses, you know, when you show up to a house and it's vacant, you do not elicit that emotional response. When you show up to one of our houses that are staged, you walk in that door and you, get a, you elicit a positive emotional um, result. For mm -hmm. your clients, most of uh, the realtors tell us that people linger more in the houses that we stage. Yes, because they're looking around. They look. They really look. They really look. Other times, if it's not an exciting house, they they'll flip through it pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah, and just walk right. away. <laughs> right. They go, eh, not for me. Yes. Leaving. <laughs> yes, then, absolutely. Then the other thing that we really try to do in the houses is create memory points because mm. these people are looking at a lot of different houses. Now, when we stage the houses, sometimes we'll put in a unique chair, a piece of art, a different design, just so that they can go back when they go home. They go, oh, do you remember that house that had the purple chair in the bedroom? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and now they're they're pulling back those memories. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think mental and emotional connection during the purchase um, is definitely what drives buyers to get out of their comfort zone. Right. Mm -hmm. And I always tell my children in the comfort zone, you don't learn and you don't grow in a comfort zone. You lose yourself as a human because we are designed as humans to constantly evolve and grow. And if we don't challenge ourselves, if we don't push ourselves out of comfort zone, you're not going to accomplish that end result. And right. how many times do we see first-time home buyers that are saving money and they really putting every dollar to it so they could save money and then eventually qualify to get a mortgage and really work on getting their credit together and really make sure that they get a better job and saving and don't going, not going out and spending all the money in the bars and clubs. I mean, this is what immigrants do, right? Mm -hmm. Go back to the immigrants, and, and this is what happens in America overall. Speaking uh -huh. of America, <laughs> the, the land of opportunity, right? This is why in America, home ownership called an American dream. Because only in America you could definitely work unlimited hours, really save your money, and within very short period of time, qualified to get a mortgage as long as you have everything aligned and you do things right. So I think I think living in this country for a lot of immigrants, I've witnessed myself, including that you work hard, you work on yourself, you do things right, you eat the right food, you behave the right way, and then in the end of the day, you could accomplish that American dream because the opportunities are endless, mm -hmm. not only for yourself, for your family, but also for the future generations to come. You know what I find very interesting? When I don't want to bother you when you're doing work. I don't want to see it. But I do want you to call me once it's done. And I like to right. just open the door and run in like a little baby into the <laughs> toy room. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Right. <laughs> Next time yeah. I'm filming you when you walk in. <laughs> because your, That's your not... expressions are the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, because I love uh, visiting and just walking around like on my days off, uh, you know, besides going and picking out, you know, new outfits for myself, I like going into home goods stores. And it's just one of the things that I just love going around and just looking and just looking at colors and looking at mirrors and looking at all kinds of different ideas. And I'm like, wow, the paintings. And it's just amazing what a room could turn into, right? Like the total transformation that you could see from how people used to live and what you guys do with it, it's just amazing. But I have to compliment you, Linda, that you have an amazing touch 
and you have an amazing vision to like total upgrade and transformation. Oh, thank like you. Like you are so talented. I I have to honestly tell you, it, it's very unique that you could find a person that would just walk into a space and say, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 and that. And I have no idea. I have no idea what you are talking about because I'm not a stager, right? I do have an idea what I want in the end, but I'm a very heavy-duty marketer. Like, I know what I need as a marketing expert to see in the end. And so, therefore, when everything is being done and staged in the end of the day, I right after you guys done, the next thing is professional photography. Mm-hmm. Next right. thing is floor plans. Video. Next thing is videos. And nowadays, I am myself dressing myself up, and I am in the video showcasing every single room and what every space has to offer. But unless one knows in their own head what they want as the end result, listen, I could give you a manual right now, a write-up. This is where you begin and this is what you do. If I would give this manual to a new agent, you would think that they would know what to do? They're not in Olga's head. (laughs) They don't know what to do. They have no idea what Olga wants in the end as far as the end result. So if anybody's watching this, right, think, oh, my God, this is what she does. I'm going to take that idea. I'm going to go put to work. Good luck. And I do want you to use my ideas because maybe together collectively, MLS in general would be a better place and more pleasant place to look at properties. And it's not a shameful for me to send this information to my buyers because do you know how many times I get buyers referrals and I do want to share some marketing ideas with them and send them MLS listings. Do you know how many times I'm just sending them MLS listing? I'm like, goodness, don't pay attention to what you see. We will go, we will see it, and we will all put it to work because I have an idea to what you could do with this. But if agents collectively will just start doing things in a different way, I could guarantee you we could collectively, us, an industry, turn this world in a completely better place and with your help and everything that we do and the photographers lucy edwards right Mm -hmm. Uh, from um, she yeah she's fantastic she's fantastic (coughs) because i think (coughs) it's the collective effort it's not just the staging it's not just the realtor (coughs) it's not just the pictures it's the collective effort of working together <laughs> and collaborating to what we could do with this. And how many times have we seen properties that they've been dropping prices? All right, let's touch right. that. Right. How many times people would just go and think, oh, you know what? It didn't sell with Joe Schmo. You know, the market is bad. The rates are high. Things are not selling. Things are not moving. But you, <laughs> there's an old saying. You never want to be... The firstborn, <laughs> the second wife, or the third realtor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? For me personally, this was a great one. Thank you. Um, but for me personally, when people call me after they were not successful with the previous realtors, I know like right off the bat where the defaults and failures sure. were. Mm-hmm. Because if agents are not investing into their projects, right? right? Into their potential collaborations with other professionals. Well, let's go backtrack a little bit. Why do you think I started this podcast to begin with? Because I understood that my clients needed to have a YouTube channel that would give them educational information where they would go in and learn everything about homes, right? And do you know how many times I go and I drive by by people's homes that are just about to begin building? Let's say they bought an old house, they want to knock it down, and they want to begin building it. Do you know how many times I just wish and pray if they only called a professional designer to really properly invest their money and design it the right way? Because in the end of the day, if you have gazillion dollars sitting in the bank, and you don't want to keep them in the bank because they depreciating. Let's talk real business here. You have your money sitting in the bank and they depreciate sure. because of the inflation and everything that we are facing in today's world, right? Right. But if you really hire a professional and you really do this right, yes, you will pay the designers money up front. 
Yes, he will pay the architect's money up front. Yes, he will pay the staging company to decorate it up front. You will get all these wonderful ideas. But when you design that home, you're not wasting money on materials that are not good enough right. for the resale value down the road. And sometimes I even look at the community where I'm at. People are building homes, and I'm like, goodness. They're horrible. What did you do? Mm -hmm. Like, you really poured all this money out, but you were cheap enough to call a designer to really put together a beautiful home where you could down the road sell it and really profit. One of the best things, and I spoke to my son Gabriel about it last night, one of the best things, I'm a big advocate about real estate because it's something you could touch, you could feel, you could use, you could raise your family in. And as you're sitting there, it's organically appreciates. In value. In value. Where are you going to find that? Right. I mean, show me anything else that does that. Doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. That's why through all my ups and downs in this business, and yes, we are going through very rough times right now with interest rates being about 7% plus or minus. We are going through a rough time, and properties are taking longer to sell. But you know what I find? True professionals, they do always find a way of finding ways of really getting out of this down market, right? Right. Where we step up and we work collectively and collaborating with other professionals. That's where you really truly prospect. And that's where I'm um, working on right now. Having this podcast, bringing all the professionals into the world, giving value to my clients, having them really go and understand what we're building, right? Because I'm building YouTube library that is go-to place for all things that people will find useful, whether it's staging homes, whether it's, you know, any other service that we provide. But that's the real meaning why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. And it's been my true pleasure having you guys today with me here because I want my clients to see the true value of everything you guys do. And I want my clients to meet who you are because behind the scenes, I guarantee you, there will be people watching. And in five years from now, they will be like, oh, do you remember Linda and Jeff? I've been watching them, you know, doing a lot of work with you because now we will collaborate. We will showcase and we'll really have buyers and sellers understand. It's a collective effort of everyone being together involved as a team, as a family, really working together, countless hours. We don't look at the clock. Do you Do you right. look at the clock? No. Like, no. I don't. And this is what I enjoy the most because, you know, of course, when we have appointments, we have to, we have to be careful that we show up on time, right? But I'm saying, like, in general, we don't say, oh, my job is done at 5 or my job is done at 6. How many, how many times you guys work above those hours oh, and, always always right yeah and putting together all your contracts and emailing me like on the instance and this is all just a pleasure to work with professionals that really know what they're doing fantastic well we love working with you thank you thank you what would be one piece that you could share with my potential clients why people should work with olga Oh, my God. Well, first of all, she's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she's the most up person you will ever meet in your Thank entire you. life. Thank you. And and what I love about her is she's so thorough. Thank she's you. so thorough, and she really cares about her clients. So much so that she just works and works and works and wants everything to be perfect and have everything go off without a hitch because you don't want to be sitting there you know, a year, two years from now, and the house hasn't sold. Absolutely. So you want to get it done the right way so that you can sell quickly and make more money, which is all of our goals. Absolutely. And I could say the same thing about you guys. You guys are amazing team. I'm very honored and happy that you guys worked together and able to stage my homes. And my clients, 
in the beginning, of course, they always say, oh, who's going to pay for it? Oh, what does it take? Oh, how much time it's going to take? Oh, what happens with all my stuff? They get into this anxiety attack mode, right? And then once we start to have a real consultation with them where we take our time, truly take our time to make sure that we explain to them the process and then when you guys come in and when you guys nurture them to make sure that they understand it's not a scary process. Yes, right. it's inconvenience. Yes, it's different. Yes, we have to get up and start moving things around sure. and cleaning things up. But it's so rewarding, not only visually, but financially. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what I love the most mm -hmm. about beautiful staged homes. I am so privileged and grateful that you guys put everything aside and you guys came out here to the studio and we made this episode happen. I really want my listeners and followers to watch and understand that everything we do is pure volunteer work. We don't get paid for doing this. It's all about our contribution to each and every one of you that's following and really making every possible effort to share and subscribe and follow and just continue to watch because we have a lot of exciting episodes and we have great deals of clients that will be using uh, beautiful stage homes because they will see the value and they would get an understanding that when it's cleaned up and it's properly presented, it appreciates in offers. Thanks, guys, for watching. I appreciate you guys all for watching. Again, once again, please subscribe, like, and share. And I'm excited to share with you more exciting episodes coming soon. Thanks again.